Hello, it's you talking again, and I would like to express now my experience with the dolphins. And of course, I will create a parallel with um, the work that you can do to understand the world around you when you're blind. But as today, I will go further into the explanations. I would like to insist that some stuff can be completely applied as well by people who can see, sighted people. So, if you're blind, maybe you will enjoy my explanations. But if you think that those explanations, these explanations might be interesting for some people who can see, please, you can invite them to listen to as well. In my work in echolocation, I have the pleasure to work with World Access for the Blind. Daniel Kish is uh, the, the, the head, the founder of this association, and is a pretty chap guy, pretty chap person, um, and um, pretty nice one, sorry, and um, very open, very pleasant, and his teaching is very powerful. He is uh, with some other teachers who have also a lot, a lot of knowledge and pedagogy. And about echolocation, I absolutely discovered everything through World Access for the Blind. And again, I insist that if you want to know technically more about echolocation, I can only invite you to go to the website of World Access for the Blind, where you can download a lot, a lot of information so that you can understand and don't hesitate as well to be in contact with Daniel Kish, who is somebody extremely open and will always answer in a very pleasant and nice way. So that is indeed very interesting. <clears throat> what I'm going to present about the dolphins is coming from my experience, my very long experience with the dolphins. And um, I will insist on the fact that um, some stuff I'm going to present are obviously presented as well by World Access for the Blind. But some others are not at all. So I will insist when things are coming only from my experience and from my knowledge, and when things are also said equally by World Access for the Blind, so that you know you make clearly difference. I don't want you to listen to me now and to say, okay, this guy is part of World Access for the Blind. No, I'm not. I follow World Access for the Blind. It's a school for me to learn echolocation. I have my life, I have my experience, my knowledge as a Shaolin monk. I have been swimming with dolphins since decades all over the world, so I have my experience with the dolphins. And many things I'm going to say are not at all coming from World Access for the Blind. Maybe they think the same, maybe not, I don't know. I never spoke with them about this. So on this, I insist heavily. World Access for the Blind uh, is not responsible of what I'm going to say now, that is a little bit more maybe spiritualist or into a certain knowledge. Right, um, <clears throat> since decades, I take people with me to go swimming with dolphins all over the world. We did that in Scotland. Well, in Scotland, it was just to watch because you cannot go swimming. In Ireland, in France, in Portugal, in Spain, in Caribbean, in Israel, in Egypt. Um, well, a lot of different places, I suppose. I forgot some others because there are so many. I never go to a delphinarium, never, never. I go to meet ambassador dolphins who are free. They go to us because they want, even if no one knows why they behave like that and they are so attracted to people. But they are always free dolphins. 
the dolphins in the delphinarium, delphinaria are um, uh, ghosts, nothing more. It's a very sad story and you shouldn't invest any money to pay those executioners to go on on their dirty life, lives. <clears throat> My way to take people to swim with the dolphins was always to say, all right, we can swim with the dolphins some hours. Then we have to go back home, to go back working. And the system is to take the dolphins as teachers. I will learn from the dolphins so that I can apply in my life their way of existing, of living, of enjoying the life. It is what we did in the Shaolin school, that is to say that we have been watching how the animals are moving, how the animals are fighting, and we tried to learn from them and not to live in the jungle forever, but to take back home their systems. It's exactly the Shaolin spirit that I want to apply now for the dolphins. There are many things that we can take from the dolphins which are also applied naturally by the school, the school World Access for the Blind. I will specify and make the difference each time. So it's very important to understand the dolphins and to apply in a system. We don't live in the water, we live in the air, on earth. But we both of us live on the same planet. We are facing more or less the same problems. Therefore, we can apply more or less the same way, the same solutions. So the first thing that we learn from the dolphins is that they love to play. Their pedagogy is a pedagogy of game. Everything for them is a game. <clears throat> the first time I met a dolphin, I wanted to attract him with a fish. So I gave him a fish. And he took the fish, so I said, oh, like a dog, you know, it's working. So he took the fish. I don't know if he ate it, but what I know is that one minute later, he came back with another fish, and he gave me back a fish. He said, it must be a game. <clears throat> they can come with seaweeds in their mouth, and then they move their mouth, they bite the mouth, I don't know, the system they do, and they spit the seaweed on you so that you take the seaweeds and you throw them away, they go and fetch it and come back and it's a game. Everything for them is a game. And when you're ill, um, it's, they understand. With their echolocation, with their sonar, they are able to analyze the inside of your body. <coughs> I will go back to this afterwards. <coughs> Therefore, they can see how your cells are, if you are nervous. They can see if you are blind, because your eyes are not working anymore. They can read that, and they can understand what it means. They can understand that you are paralyzed. They can understand that you are not normal in your nervous system, whatever else. The first time um, I went to swim with a sort of association, it was in Israel, and um, at that time, the dolphins, it was at the dolphin reef, and the, at that time, the dolphins were completely free. And to go swimming with the dolphins, there was a big net to stop the sharks, because the Red Sea is full of sharks. So I was very happy to swim only with the dolphins, not also with the sharks. And um, I am with a guide sitting on this huge net, and the guy is telling me what I should do. He says, you know, the dolphins, they will take a lot of time for you to get used to you. So it's really, you know, like um, uh, becoming friend. It will take a lot of time. Don't try to approach them. They will go to you slowly. And I was sitting on this net and uh, 
with my weight and the weight of my guide, the net was a bit down, so we were in the water, more or less to the chest. So nearly the complete body in the water, but sitting on this nest, on this net. And, um, and, um, at one point while he's talking to me, I feel like something biting my, uh, my thigh. So I thought that it was a jellyfish, you know, because it was a strange feeling. I was wondering what it was. And then suddenly I was pulled into the water and I understood that it was a dolphin that was pulling me into the water. And then I was in the water and the dolphin was at once on me, pushing me and playing with me. And I remember the guide, the teacher was there. He was looking at that and he said, Iji, forget everything I told you. For you it's different. And it was. And it was a fantastic time. A fantastic time. <clears throat> and the dolphins were able to understand that my eyes were not working anymore. They were completely different with me. Because their sonar system is so powerful that it can also read your cells in your body. They can understand if you're nervous or not. They know if a woman is pregnant or not. Even since only two hours. And we know because they make a special sound to recognize a, a mammal, female, that is pregnant. And we know through their behavior that, um, behaviors that they can recognize. I worked also with autistic children, and I can assure you that with the autistic children, the dolphins are accepting everything that you shouldn't do. The autistic children are allowed to do anything they want with the dolphins. If you do just one little part of this, the dolphins will go, you, will go away from you. <clears throat> so they're obviously able to understand that you're different. And so the first time was in Fort sur mer which was a town in France where I could swim a little bit with the dolphin, but not so much. And then I went to Israel to swim with other dolphins in Israel. That was my second time where there, there was not one dolphin, but about a dozen. But I was very, very afraid to one special dolphin who was really in love with me, and I was in love with her. It was a female, and uh, it was a fantastic time, so fantastic that when I had to leave after maybe one month, I cried. I really cried as if I were living the love of my life. And there I discovered that we can really love, even if it's not, we, we cannot speak, we don't have the same way, we don't even have the same element to live in, and we can be in love to each other. And um, um, for the dolphins, game is above everything, and they teach to each other, <coughs> through the games. And because of the games, they became the super champions of the sea. For them, like giving a, a fish, as I did with the first dolphin, means nothing, because for them, to fish, to eat, is so easy that it would be like if I were meeting you in a shop, in a supermarket, for instance, and we are by the fruit, and I give you one orange. And you say, oh, thank you, and then you take one orange and you give it back to me as well. You know, it's a game. They, they are so powerful that for them it's so easy to eat, to live, to survive. There's only one thing that they didn't foresee. Foresee? They didn't foresee. It is the darkness of humanity, the pollution, the nets. That, they are not ready for this. But for the rest, in the sea, they are already the masters. They are excited about everything. And to give you an idea, a rabbit will use 90% of his life, of his energy of life, to survive. And only 10% to relax, to learn, to enjoy. A human, regarding his evolution, will have 60 to 40% of his life available for the pleasure. And of course, 
uh, vice versa system for the duty, which is shopping, working, surviving, doing what you have to do to pay your rent, to look after your house, and only between 40 to 60 percent to enjoy, to learn, to read. A dolphin will use around 5 percent of his life to survive and 95 percent of his life to enjoy, to learn, to play. <clears throat> Therefore, who is really the intelligent race on this planet? According to me, maybe those who enjoy the life on 95 percent, you know, we are far from it, indeed. And the uh, 95 persons are really done to learn, to enjoy. And because they want to play, play, to play means to learn. And that, according to me, <clears throat> if we take world access for the blind, they do apply this. I started to learn a little bit echolocation with this uh, association, and everything I did was funny, cool and pleasant, exciting. Oh! We do it again, we play again, really, I swear, nothing boring. Then, um, the dolphins presented many problems to the science. The first problem was that they could swim too quickly. What do I mean? The American army has been calculating how fast a dolphin could go. Because with the power of the tail, which is the main muscle to swim for the dolphin, they cannot go above 20 kilometers an hour. And in spite of that, the dolphins, some dolphins were recorded officially above 60 kilometers an hour, and some were seen only above 80 kilometers an hour. So that is a big problem. So much that uh, the army created a plastic dolphin with a fan that had exactly the power of the tail of the dolphin, and the, this dolphin was not going above 20 kilometers an hour. So um, the science was right, and the dolphins were wrong. You cannot swim so quick. Stop it. It's forbidden. <clears throat> but this calculation was done with a simple system, that is to say that the resistance of the water, the twirls when you swim um, of water, are twirls of resistance against the power of your muscles of the engine of the fan. So it's a subtraction, which is the power of the, of the fan minus the resistance of the water makes the real speed. And for years, no one could understand how the dolphins could go so quickly. And we have discovered, finally, that the dolphins have a high sensitivity on their skin. And as soon as they feel the beginning of a resistance in the water, that is at the beginning of a trill of resistance, they are going to change the form of their body so that this resistance is destroyed. But of course, when you destroy this resistance, a new one is going to start on the new form of your body. And then you have to change again and again. And more or less, each half second, the dolphin is changing slightly the form of his body so that he can break the law of resistance of the water. So, in fact, he goes very quickly, a little bit with his muscles, but a lot with his brain and with his high sensitivity. By doing so, you break the rules of resistance of the water. You can in the life break the rules of resistance, you know, in psychology, in communication, in a lot of different places, in the protocol of the society, you can break the laws of resistance, but that would be a long conference about this. About blindness, you can also break the laws of resistance, or the law of resistance. That is said that when you're blind, when you walk, ooh, it's painful, ouch, 
a wall, ouch, a door. And there you have to learn to use a cane. With Daniel Kish, I learned to use a cane that is quite long, that is giving me a lot of information from, I would say, far away. And because this cane is long enough, you can really walk quickly. If you use the feather technique, which is to touch the pavement but very slightly and very quickly, largely around you, you know everything about the dangers that are in front of you. And thanks to this, you can walk very quickly. And I will, I will do indeed a parallel between the use of the cane and the sensitivity of the dolphins on their skin to stop the resistance of the water. We do the same. You have to be very uh, sensitive with a can to have a lot of information so that instead of walking very timidly, um, you can really walk quick because you break the law of resistance of the darkness. And that is indeed a problem that I do and that uh, the World Access for the Blind is really teaching to use the can to know everything in front of you. Then we have the inside um, map of the brain of the dolphins. They have like a magnetic compass inside their brain. And they know where they are heading to. They know where they are because they have like a world map in the brain with a magnetic system in the brain. So they always know where they are. You know, in the past, when I could see, I used to go diving, sometimes with a tank, and I can tell you that I was always flabbergasted to see that the teachers knew exactly where they were, because once you're in the water, there is no way to know where you're going. I mean, there is a way, obviously, but it's quite tough and difficult. The dolphins, they always know where they are, because they have this compass inside the brain. Well, that is also something taught by uh, World Access for the Blind, which is that when you walk, you bear in mind which directions you took, left, right, 20 degrees, 40 degrees, and you remember, left, right, straight on, blah, blah, blah. So whenever, wherever you go, you will, for instance, remember that the car you left is basically behind you, 20 degrees behind right side, for instance, let's say five, more or less 500 meters. And uh, thanks to that, you will know which direction to take. And I can tell you that personally, I find this exercise extremely uh, tough for me. But it's very important. And um, um, you will have also some, some references, because with the echolocation that we use, you can recognize a big tree, you can recognize a special house, a special resonance somewhere. So you recognize the landscape of sounds. So, and with the direction and with the points of references, you can find your way back, for instance, quite easily, which is quite fantastic if you think that you're blind and how limited we are usually when you are blind. So the system of the magnetic compass from the inside of the brain, from the dolphins, I can assure you that World Access for the Blind is teaching in an intellectual way, of course, exactly the same system, and it is extremely powerful. Then, of course, of course, you have the echolocation itself, used by the dolphins for different reasons. First of all, you have to know that they see perfectly well, so at the surface, the echolocation is not that useful, but they have learned to analyze the inside of the body. Because from the inside of the body, they know a lot. They can recognize if the in, through the inside if uh, a fish in front of them could be a predator or not, regarding what he has been eating, what he has in his stomach. <clears throat> and is able to analyze at once who is weak and who is strong. They also do something that I saw myself and uh, in the past, and that um, 
is not yet recognized by science, or partly the start. That is to say that a, 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 a dolphin is able to knock out one fish from far with echolocation. So the fish is like paralyzed, and you have a bunch of fish going away, and you have just one fish in the middle, bloop, 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 still swimming slowly, not following at all his friends, and being eaten by the dolphin because, because the dolphin had decided to eat this one. So, of course, echolocation is very powerful. They can reach 1,000 clickings each second. So, of course, it's a system that is very powerful and that they use to analyze the inside. Unfortunately, the echolocation is not working on the net, for instance. So, um, when they have a net in front of them, they are unable to analyze what it is because the system is not working on that. And that is exactly the same, according to me, with my, my little experience for echolocation. That is that echolocation sometimes is working some stuff and some others it doesn't work at all. Like stairs down, echolocation doesn't work. You cannot hear. If you don't have the cane, you fall down. And some other stuff that I cannot hear, but I suppose that I cannot do that because I don't have a lot of experience. I cannot recognize a chair or a table until now. So, uh, for me, it doesn't work. I suppose that for some experts or teachers of World Access for the Blind, it's possible, but it's not for me. So, whatever echolocation is working fantastically well for some stuff, but even for the dolphin, for some other stuff, it doesn't work. They use also echolocation because they go to hunt um, very deep in the water. And when you go above, underneath, I would say 40 meters deep, then it's completely dark. And the dolphins can go to hunt until three, 400 meters deep, even deeper. So there, they manage only with echolocation because it's completely dark, which is not at all a problem for them. Of course, echolocation is also taught by World Access for the Blind with a great pedagogy, a great savoir-faire, and you develop a knowledge of echolocation very, very quickly. And there, again, it's completely, um, it's completely in harmony, a perfect parallel between World Access for the Blind and the dolphins. Another system that the dolphins are doing, which I find very interesting, is the fact that, you see, when we sleep, we have the little brain, the primitive brain, that is controlling the breathing, heart beating, temperature, blood. So we can be completely asleep, and there's no problem, because the little brain is working uh, after this, is looking after this. But, the dolphins have only one big brain. They don't have any more any primitive brain. On this, again, they are superior to what we are. Which means that they control with their own will the heart beating, beatings, the breathing, the blood, everything. Which means that if they get absent-minded, they die. Oh, shit, I forgot to breathe. I forgot my heart. And of course, if they sleep, they die at once. How could they? And anyway, they are mammals. So they need to breathe. And uh, they need also to see what is around them. Sharks, boats coming. They cannot hide somewhere because they have to stay at the surface. So what is the solution? Oh my God, my God. They found the solution. The dolphins need to sleep only three hours a night. One hour and a half, they sleep with only one eye, and half of the brain is sleeping. The other eye is open, and the other part of the brain is active, active enough to control the biological system and the swimming system so that they can swim gently to stay at the surface and to breathe. After one hour and a half, it's the time of the other eye and other part of the brain. 
If you imagine this, they are in a state of fantastic meditation. They are half active, half passive, which is the perfect state of what we call active meditation, where you are different and hyperactive at the same time because you're in a state of mind that is very, very different. And that is a path to create a very high sensitivity ready. For me, personally, as a Shaolin monk, I would say that uh, it's really, I do a parallel with meditation. Meditation allowing you to feel a lot around you when you're in meditation, and then the active meditation, which is what we practice when we practice Tai Chi Chuan and fighting, where we are in a, in a state of mixing state of different webs, cerebral waves, alpha and beta mainly. I know that some teachers of World Access for the Blind do uh, practice meditation as well, even if meditation is not at all part of the teaching of World Access for the Blind. So I will make the parallel to my life, and maybe I will make a parallel to the lives of some teachers of World Access for the Blind, but it is not a teaching of World Access for the Blind. It's not part of the teaching as far as I know. But I can only advise this as well, because you can feel something and you can learn to be different and to listen to everything, everything, not only the collocation, not only the clickings, but also the way of breathing of the others, the way of walking, the shoes they have, the door that is open and closed, the car that is coming. Very often I walk with my friends and I inform them to dodge this car coming from behind because no one noticed but me, for instance. That's a very, very simple example. Sometimes we walk in the forest and they say, there's an animal on the left-hand side. And they didn't see him. And I, they say, oh, yes, you're right. And they see. But I was the first one to see him. That's the state. When we go a little bit more into meditation and spirituality, you have to know that when we want to hear more, we are going to listen to, of course, the echolocation, but we are going to hear to the what we call passive echolocation, the sounds around. But maybe we could hear even more sounds that officially don't exist. We start to hear the invisible sounds or the impossible sounds. In spirituality, it goes through a special chakra that is called Vishuddha. That is what we call the third ear, it's the throat chakra. And it is um, a chakra that is able to, to listen to the invisible, like channeling, inspiration, whatever you can imagine. And we call it the third ear because uh, it makes a perfect equilateral triangle with the two other ears. And what is quite funny and interesting is that the dolphin, when he's using the sonar system, is creating a sound and is receiving this sound, not by the ears, because he has no ears, but exactly underneath his mouth to the throat, exactly on, compared to us, is exactly Vishuddha. And this part of the body, of the dolphin, is able to receive the dolphin, the, the, the clickings, the sonar, and to analyze each of them. And personally, that has nothing to do with World Access for the Blind. Now it's really the Shaolin monk who is talking. Um, personally, when I use the clicking system, I try to visualize all the time a triangle of perception, my two ears, and my, th and my throat, my three ears, like a triangle, like a radar, open to read even more than only the echolocation, but maybe more. I accept a special function to go even deeper in my perceptions, to feel better, to understand 
better, to feel the energy of somebody, to feel when he's afraid, to feel when he's happy, to feel when he needs something. You don't feel anymore only the position, but you can go much, much deeper. And <clears throat> if I still stay on the position of echolocation from the dolphins, something else is quite interesting is to know that the dolphin, so the dolphin a long, long time ago was a wolf. And then um, he had from the continent to go back to water because the food was missing and the food was only in the water. So the wolves started to go back to the sea and they got used so much to the sea that they changed completely. But if you look at a dolphin, you will be able to see the face of a dog. The muzzle moved slowly from the, the, the tip of the nose to the top of the head. But if you put the um, whole breathing, no, the breathing hole, I always mix, um, from the top to the tip of the nose, it's a dog. And by doing so, the dolphin, with evolution, separated completely the system of digestion and eating in the mouth and the system of breathing. If the system of breathing had something to do still today with the mouth, the dolphins, who are mammals, therefore they could, uh, they could drown, you know, they could die, um, they wouldn't be able to eat in the water especially deep in the water. So the system of the mouth was separated so that the system of eating has nothing to do with the system of breathing. The system of breathing just by the hole, the top of the head, and the system of eating is the mouth. When you look at a dolphin making special sound, you see him outside of the water opening his mouth and making some sound. So you say, he's making a sound like us. No. In fact, He's taking some air through the hole and putting this air into a pocket that is exactly in front of his forehead. Then he's contracting this pocket to create some different sounds of clicking or singing and he's opening his mouth only as a game of resonance, as if I were making a sound in my hands that I open more or less, but my hands don't make any sound. Just a game of resonance. It's exactly the same for the dolphins. Therefore, the dolphins are sending the clickings, the sonar, through exactly the forehead, which in spirituality for humans is exactly what we call ashna. That is to say, the third eye. And through this third eye, when we know a bit the rules of spirituality, it is a third eye that allows us to know, to analyze to understand, and even to project and to fight against some dark powers and entities. Isn't it fantastic to see that the dolphins are the incarnation of Ashna? Their echolocation is a way to know and even a way to knock out, to knock a fish out. How fantastic! And then, when we use echolocation that we link ourselves to the dolphin, we should try to go a bit further, maybe, and to project as well an inf um, um, a desire of information, I would say, through Ajna, so that we have a large field of information. The third eye, the two ears, the third ear, echolocation, and we try to know everything around us. That is indeed a link that could change radically your perceptions. So, of course, here we are absolutely into Shaolin teachings. We are not at all anymore with World Access for the Blind. Maybe they would agree, maybe they wouldn't agree. I don't know, and I don't care, because it's not the goal here. Here I'm just presenting a little bit more what I know and the parallels I can create between what we can do and we, we cannot do. And from there, you can understand that even if you're not blind, those explanations might be very, very clear and interesting because I know a lot of sighted people who are indeed, indeed very much blind, I can assure you. 
blinded by the society, by the values, by the conditioning. Oh my God. Then we can create another parallel with the dolphins. They live in family. Each dolphin is looking after the other one. We know that a dolphin is pregnant because as soon, the same day, as soon as she's pregnant, there's a second female dolphin that will start to be on the side of the pregnant dolphin and will look after the pregnant dolphin. Until the day, the, the day of the birth, the female dolphin will be there and even afterwards because she will help to look after the baby as well. For instance, the baby needs to breathe and uh, cannot yet swim because it's going to learn to swim. It cannot yet swim and breathe correctly. So it's the second dolphin, not the mother, the female dolphin, who will look after the baby to bring the baby up to the surface to be able to breathe, to help and to survive. When the mother is giving birth, the other dolphins are swimming around the mother and they create a wall of protection. No one is entering this circle. They live as a family. Each one is different. And I can tell you that when I met some dolphins, they are absolutely with a very different temper. And each with a different temper has different qualities. And those qualities, in addition with the qualities of the other members of this family, make a fantastic, powerful family. And that goes absolutely well with the Shaolin Temple, where we don't believe in isolation, we believe in brotherhood. And we believe that if you develop your, as a blind person, your echolocation, to be able to give to those who can see something that they cannot see, uh, cannot do or see, especially if you develop Vishuddha and Ajna, the third ear and the third eye, those people would be part of your family as well, because it will be interesting for them to have your qualities, as it will be very interesting for you to have their qualities. And that is also indeed an intense um, power of the family. The dolphins are not living alone. We don't know why the ambassador dolphins have decided to leave the other dolphins and to go to the humans. But for sure what we know is that they need the humans because they refuse the dolphins. We have a lot of theories, but in fact, we don't know. The dolphins as well are using the sex. Let's speak a little bit about the sex. The dolphins are always, always, always having sex. They are always cuddling each other. They love that we cuddle them as well because they love the contact of our skin. And, and they are always enjoying the pleasure of the other one and even the sex with another dolphin. And I will not say that Shaolin is teaching a gangbang, but the sensuality, sensuality, yes, absolutely. The pleasure of sex, to have your body alive, to have your body um, aware, sensitive, active, sexual, yes, absolutely. Because um, the dolphins are using something else that is extremely important. They are absolutely, absolutely beings of love. And the love is the tool to perceive, to know. Why should I try to know something about some people I reject completely? I have to be interested in people, in something, to be really open to know, to feel, to understand. It's my desire of love that will give me my power of understanding. And part of this love could be also the sexuality so that our body is hypersensitive. Personally, when I go to swim, I use the heat of the sun to know the direction. Um, as I am a Shaolin monk, I have no hair, 
so I can feel easily on my scale where the sun is. And as long as we don't have clouds, I can go to swim alone. I know the directions. Sometimes when I go back to the beach, I'm not exactly where I started, but at least I know where the beach is. And of course, I will use, when I walk, the heat of the sun on my skin as well, on my arms or wherever, to know the direction. That will be part of my magnetic compass. So we have to learn to be hypersensitive, and the love is indeed a system. I know that the programming of the society says, Ooh, sex is bad, Ooh, don't be too sensual, sensual. Ooh, don't be afraid of that, it's bad, you will go to hell. Well, you know, as I am blind, hell or heaven, I will not make the difference, so it doesn't matter. What I know is that my desire of love, of love of any kind, friendship, care, compassion, sexuality, love with the other, excitement with the others, will be indeed a system to be very much into love, very much hypersensitive. I heard one day a story from Boris Nordman, who was working with Daniel Kish in a country, I don't know which country, and uh, it was quite cold. So um, it was more or less a story like um, Boris Nordman said to Daniel, uh, oh, I have a coat, it's cold, you want my coat? Something like this. And Daniel said, no, because if I am too comfortable, I will not be any more hypersensitive, and that might be dangerous. I must always stay on the fringe of a little bit of incomfort, in comfort, so that my body is hypersensitive. Well, it goes a little bit with this idea, but I believe that uh, we can go even deeper with a lot, a lot of love, a lot, a lot of desires to love, to know, and to care about everyone around me. If you have your girlfriend, her way of breathing, her way of walking, her way of moving, and you know a lot about her already if you are a little bit sensitive because you love her and everything she does is very important. Why is it that you cannot do the same with the others? It's not because you are an idiot. It's because you don't love enough. So the fantastic love of the dolphins we can try to apply by being ourselves a cool dolphin that is extremely welcome in a family of dolphins. And all together, we are fantastically well and invulnerable. Indeed. To finish, the dolphin has another power. And I will finish by talking about this, this, uh, about this power. Well, ourselves, when I speak like now, I am into beta waves. And when we sleep, when we meditate, we are in alpha waves. When we are into mediumic states, we know from the science that we are emanating a mixing of alpha and beta waves at the same time. And the exchanges between the two parts of the brain are much quicker than in normal state. Much, much quicker. Ten times quicker. And the, the dolphins are always in the alpha waves. They don't know the beta waves. They are always in alpha waves. But because our body is mainly water, when we go to swim in the water, and that the dolphins are using echolocation, this echolocation goes through us. They read our body. And by doing so, they give also those alpha waves. And after 10 minutes of swimming with the dolphins, anyone who is in the water with the dolphins is also in alpha waves which is creating a state that is extremely powerful to, to, to evolve into even therapy. 
because you go back to memories. You, I mean, when you take people swimming with dolphins, as I do from time to time, it's very dangerous. It's not dangerous with the dolphins. It's not dangerous with the humans during the swimming. It's extremely dangerous with the humans after the swimming because you have the side effect of the, of the alpha waves that, are, that is pushing people uh, to react very strongly. And sometimes I stop people from committing suicide or doing incredibly dangerous stuff because they don't realize. Suddenly they are like kids. They are so excited, so different, so different. I remember a couple... They were with me in Israel, and they had a baby that was a vegetable baby. He was two or three years old, and he never reacted in any way. And um, I'm very, very linked to the dolphins. And at one point, we are at the harbor where some dolphins were coming. And the father wanted to play some music because he was a professional musician. So he took his instrument, he was ready, and then I said, in a strange state, I said, two dolphins are coming now. It was in the dark, and, and just afterward, two heads of dolphins blowing and listening, looking at, at the man who is starting to play music. Behind is the mother with the baby in her hands, in her arms. Then they listen a little bit, and then they go away. So the man is stopping one second, looking at me, and I say, go on. And he goes on playing for maybe one minute, and at one point I look at him and I say, now three dolphins are coming. And maybe five seconds afterward, <laughs> three dolphins are appearing, listening to the music and starting to do some strange sound. You know, so weird. And the baby started to cry. All the sorrow of his soul and of his body. And the father and the mother, they started to cry so intensely. It was so fantastic, so incredible. And the dolphins stood their heads outside of the water, shouting with them. And then I had to leave. It was a meeting of a family that I was not part of. So I just had to leave. And then the father came back to me. He had still tears in his eyes. And he told me, E.G., it was... And I just stopped him and I said, I know. It was for you. And for your baby. And he cried again so much. And he changed. Of course, the baby said what he is, a vegetable. But he changed completely their relations between the mother, the father, and the baby. You go into these alpha waves. And I think that, indeed, deeply, already when you're different, you have a different emanation, blind or not blind, and you can give some alpha waves to the others. And if you create a link by a sound, a collocation that we need to move when you are blind. I am sure that with the practice of echolocation and the practice of meditation and love, through echolocation we could give through our radiations, and echolocations are part of those radiations, you could give something that is extremely powerful to the others. That is also indeed a parallel I create with the world of the dolphins. And when we take all of this, finally, isn't it cool to be blind? Therefore, to be obliged to evolve in a way that we will become more than the others. And finally, through this, being blind is becoming a benediction for myself and for the others. So, just be welcome in the family of happiness and love. Just be welcome in the family of the dolphins.